You know, I remember just about 45 years ago, I was uh, in this classroom in the seminary, and we were about to embark on a study of the Holy Trinity in theology. And the professor we had started out by saying, you feel how warm it is in this classroom? And he goes, yes, because it's either too hot, too cold, never right. And he said, well, he said, the sun, and I was, the sun was coming on from my left. The sun, he said, sends out its rays, and then the rays hit the window pane, and then what we are feeling is the warmth. It's um, the heat. And he said, think about God the Father, the Son, S-U-N, sending out rays, God the Son, S-O-N, and from the sun, 90 million miles away, and the rays, we get the heat, which is God the Holy Spirit. So I said to myself, that was pretty easy. I had this book I had to buy, 500 pages. I said, you know, why do I need this? Um, I also used, thought of the example of St. Patrick. You know, he had that clover leaf flower of Ireland, and it said that he used the clover, the shamrock as we know it, to teach uh, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons in one God. So again, I said, you know, what's the mystery here? Well, I'll tell you. It gets harder. <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit is the most important doctrine in the church, the core doctrine. And surprisingly enough, it's the most important issue in the church. It always has been and always will be. Because God is a community of persons. John says God is love, a special kind of love. A kind of love that gives and gives a self-emptying without expecting any kind of thanks, even gratitude. The key idea is, in today's second reading, St. Paul writing to the Romans, he says, the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. That sums up the whole Holy Trinity. It sums up uh, the entire uh, gospel. St. Augustine writes, and you can tell it gets a little complicated now, God the Father is the lover, God the Son is the beloved, God, the Holy Spirit, is the love that delights them. But what it's saying is that God relates to us and is connected to us in the community of the church. It's his body, and we are uh, the church. We are the body of Christ. Now, we can meet God in prayer. We know that. And we meet God right here in the scriptures and if, certainly we meet and encounter God in the Holy Eucharist. But because of the Holy Trinity, the overarching way we meet God, the risen Christ, is right here in the community of the church. Let me explain. Last Monday, I noted my 46th anniversary of ordination to the priesthood right here in the cathedral. Thank you. Thank you. And among other things, I meditated on the way in my history of meeting the risen Lord in the community of the church. And I wish to share my history, my experience with you, and I ask you to think about how the story of the good news of Jesus has been passed on to you, okay? Do a thing like down memory lane here. Well, as a child, those members of the community who were my parents, my first domestic church, and my grandparents who lived in near proximity, really disclosed Jesus to me. They were the first, culturally. 
It came to me through my parents, godparents, grandparents. Then as a student in primary and secondary school, the nuns and priests who function in the community revealed Jesus to me, not only by the way they taught, not only the way they preached, but the way they lived, the way they served others, their commitment. And they did so, in, as I perceived it, with joy, with such happiness. I was very fortunate to attend college and seminary. And I was so moved by some really good teachers who deepened my knowledge of Jesus and the good news. And then they introduced me to these various spiritual writers and authors, and they helped enrich my understanding and relationship with this uh, living God. And finally, the significant people in my life, my family, some dear friends who are members of the church community. They have strengthened, reinforced, challenged me to grow in my knowledge of Jesus as a person, in my faith in him as a Lord, and in service and imitation of him as Savior, however inadequately that comes out of my life. And I can tell you, I meet saints every day in the community of the church, live models, people who are living heroic Christian lives, very unassumingly, way behind the scenes. And right now in this church, I know there are saints out there. I know. And I'm not talking about the stained glass windows. I mean so many of you who shared their faith stories with me and are living heroic spiritual lives in your own particular circumstances of life. You see what I mean? How God is, the living Christ is conveyed to us. He's given to us to the community of the church. God is a community. He's not an individual uh, reality. Look at, very few people will claim that their encounter with the Christ event, the resurrection, has not been mediated to other members of the community of the faithful. Now look at, such mediators may have been inadequate, insensitive, uninformed, incompetent. Some of these mediators, these communicators of the faith, have been wonderfully creative, sometimes boring and hesitantly. Sometimes they communicate the good news with great power and strength. Sometimes, ah, eh, not with so much clarity. But for all their weaknesses and deficiencies, they still have transmitted to us Jesus Christ, who is Lord and Savior, to the community of the church. Look at I despise the failings of the church, but I love the church because it is only through the church that this incredible revelation of God's love has been brought to me, the Holy Trinity. In a sense, this points up, you know, the necessity of the church, a structure, a, a visible community that passes on the story. It passes on the story. Look, if there is no resurrection, if there is no great Christ event, well, you won't need a structure. But if there is no structure and there is a resurrection, we would never know about it without the church. Just think what happened if the early Christians stayed home. Remember after the resurrection, Jesus, go, go ahead of me in Galilee, and he said, now, go out and baptize, teach na all nations about me, proclaim the good news, pass the story on, pass the story on. You know, the church has this cloud of witnesses that chain spread through history a community of people who have passed on the story. And when I was giving um, my little history, and I hope that you were reminiscing a little bit about how you received the good news and all, it occurred to me once that each one of us in our own way has been loved into the church. I could be wrong on this, but I suspect not many of you are here today because of doctrine, 
or the infallibility of the Pope or the issues of peace and justice or uh, the hierarchy. Think about it. Every one of us had to be loved into the church. No wonder, God is love. Three persons and one God. So the church is the body of Christ. You know, we are the church. And we not only have to belong to the church, but we have to participate in the church. We have to participate in the life of the church. We have to be responsible for the church. You and I, it's important that we be here, that we be here, that we be here. We have to pass on the story. We are part of that chain that goes back, way back. I talked to myself too, how the church can only be as strong as the weakest link. Wow, what a responsibility that puts upon us. The church depends on our commitment, our commitment. The Holy Trinity is a community of persons. God is love, and we radiate, in a sense, the Holy Trinity when we love. You know, I'm privileged to visit a good number of people in the hospital each week, and um, people always tell me about their parish, and it's amazing how I very seldom hear a bad word. I very seldom hear a bad word about the clergy. It's, un it's really, people love their priests, people love their parish, because sometimes you hear about all the problems, and boy, you'd never know it from firsthand testimony. But when we do get talking about the church and what makes the church go and all this, this is what I learned or relearned, and I think it really fits this theme of the Blessed Trinity, that what draws people into the church is love, is community experience, is support, not liturgy, not doctrine, you know, not all the issues of the day. What draws people into the church is love. And what drives people away from the church, pure and simple, is a lack of love, a lack of community. We have to renew our commitment, to renew our faith, to support one another, together to pass on that story, so that the good news will always be proclaimed and lived through you and me.